All right, let's give a round of applause for Michael Bay. <laughs> Give us and uh, the next, our next reader is a really wonderful man, uh, totally made out of all the right parts and uh, long from the top down. Uh, let's give a round of applause for Chelsea uh, Tresca. Glasses fizzed, children leaned in and listened to the soda sparkle, and a few families linked hands for grace. The people in Larkman Lane lived comfortably. As the road graduated a quarter mile, homes wet the hills and became more storied. Sometimes from the head of a table, a husband on Larkman Lane pictured that difference waving down through acres of grove and felt pitiful. Even after his daughter said amen and his head swung up, his fork already pinned to a green bean. Michael's home was pale and bushy from the front. Its single floor spread around like a horseshoe. He had bought it for its shape. The dining room was a halfway point. It's where his breath caught and the fresh doors opened to the front yard. Nothing was kept in the room, in the room but a long table that sat four to six. During the two years he'd been living there, though, no more than two had ever stayed at once and Michael refused to eat at the dining room table alone. The couples along Larkman Lane were married. If they were without kids, their forks turned down sooner and chairs unfolded under a gazebo. Their love was often less troubled and they spent any extra hours outside and close together. Michael was seated in the living room and could see the pool spilling over with rain. It was falling as hard as it had 19 years ago in Sanibel. Michael had spent whole afternoons inside a beachfront cabin, eating danishes from breakfast baskets. In those days, everything smelled like salt and lightning. He would watch a storm through the kitchen window, and that had busied the young boy the eight summers till he was 12. The last summer, the rain had hit the hardest. When no one was on the water and fans were torn off palm trees, the air sharpened with sand, and Michael would turn to check up on the strength of his parents' love his mother picking through a puzzle again, his father untangling the lines of his rods. They were quiet, and Michael had thought his family was getting along. What adolescents learn is they have more to learn, but what they lose is forever lost on them. Vacations might be just one thing the tide takes back. Also, a father who brings his son out to the beach and teaches him to cast a line. The sound of the letter Z, a spool's hiss as it empties into the ocean, a father's big, wild hands. The way a fight is reeled and overturned and a fish is dragged in for dinner. A mother's way of clapping and coming back out of the cabin with a camera. A mother's brown skin and her hugs that smell like coconut. A mother's way of giving her son all the credit. The way she salts and rubs and seasons a fish. The way a family plays shuffleboard as dinner cooks. Wraps a long, splintered bench with towels. Eats barefoot by the grill. The way the sea bursts at night and the evening can smell smoky. And blades of grass get stuffed between the family's toes. Also, a son's way of calling his father a hero. Vacations were how, Michael, were how Michael's parents could turn on their home. It's what had skilled his father for a second life, a skill that had made it difficult for Michael's family to have dinner on a long table when that family knew one was ready to leave. A mother looks over and thinks, my child and I will need a smaller table. It's a life sentence resolving the choices made by a father 
whose taste for strangers created a silence that befell across any room a family was ever held in. My mouth is so dry. I'm sorry for you guys that are looking at that happen. <laughs> um, um, eventually, what pains went home becomes a story that a child develops a similar addiction for. And what a child could have learned from the grown man who admitted to missing his youth is neither unnecessary or inevitable. He stood and shut the four pairs of French doors. All day, Michael hadn't felt well. <coughs> he stood in his office, the rain streaked the glass. Across him was his bedroom at the opposite end of the house. Michael jerked the curtains closed. From his right side, a small table lamp sketched a shadow on the desk. Paper cluttered the corners, and in the middle, the keyboard was gray with views. The lamp was supposed to initiate, uh, imitate natural sunlight, fooling it into a body, boosting a writer's mood. But the light was white and hazy and clinical. Michael pulled a step letter out from the closet, where he kept various unread books. He tugged twice on both short chains, and lights went out from the center of the room. Plenty of chairs were kept in the office. Those particular for reading were pillow topped and lean and angled by the doors that looked out toward the side of the pool. They were like reclining lawn chairs. But when he wrote, he sat straight up on leather that was tooled and foamed and cushioned. You see, can I? You here? I'm so sorry. It's this okay. Is so bizarre. <coughs> I never had beer. That was probably like the third time I've ever had a set. Not that I don't drink. Not that I don't drink. It's not beer. Well, that helped. Um, all right. Because he was committed to writing, Michael figured he should be sitting in the comfort of a high-end luxury automobile. Thank you. The steel lumber felt like riding in a Corvette. Michael had been keeping the Tuscany leather clean with a soft cloth and saddle soap, but over the last ten days, everything that belonged to him had been reconsidered, and the comfort of the tan chair was one thing that showed neglect. The color had blemished, the rear leather creased, and the desk chair was backed into a corner. Michael was seated in an upholstered dining chair that had been dragged over to the desk. That was the way he ate a meal alone. Outside, the storm had slowed, and the roofs along Larkman Lane snapped where the rain still hit. But overall, the neighborhood was quiet again. Plates were cleaned and wiped dried, and water didn't gush from the gutters and onto the sun deck. Through the hills, windows were let open, and a freshness folded back into the homes. And then there was Michael, a mug of warm chicken broth in his hand. A woman would cry openly for the man who had let her down should know. The heart was a great glass house that filled up with rain. Sometimes it was better for a family not to wait for the furniture to dry, to sell the house and separate. Because once the ceiling became too moist, it tore through like tissue. The roof would slide and a home could collapse after it began to tilt. Michael was 13 when things inside began tilting. He lived in a neighborhood where he couldn't just go outside to play. It was safe, but there weren't enough kids. Michael had indoor summers. He saw a lot and sometimes too much seeing troubled a young boy. His father in the study, his father sweating with his arms folded over a date book, a small globe spinning under his finger. The way his father stopped it with an entire hand, in the coppery light that beamed up through the countries that pinned a pattern on the wall, a quietness that eventually made the family twitch. Listen, son, he said, his father waving Michael in from the hall, his father watching his son close the door to his study, the way he tiptoed, his body lighter than it had ever been. I don't want to be fighting with your mother, his father said. Michael nodded. Stuffed birds were circling the room. Their small brown wings were raised. She can have everything. Michael nodded again. His father sat, his neck itched in sweat. Michael saw the deep grooves that the task chair's five wheels had made in the mat, like pop marks on leather. His father had been seated too long. It was the summer of Michael's 13th birthday. The leather sunk and curled up on the sides. Sunny said, everything will be all right. But sometimes the slumber in a couple's feet sends a boy to his room. Sometimes the fear of drowning isn't linked to an experience of when one swam. Sometimes when a home is not lit, the family is laying down. Sometimes Michael's family didn't dream. They would float. Memories of that too, it floated. It drifted in and out, carried a conversation of who a person was. It was the way life talked back to a man, 
Memory wasn't a dream. It was how Michael could be 31 and sit down with his pa parents for dinner. It was how he could make their marriage last, how he could be 13 again. Memory was the way a man adjusted to all he has known. It was the way some stories survived. Memory was Michael watching his mother years later, the way she took the turkey back and stood wrapping it in foil. It was the way a woman cried openly, the way she told the man who had let her down that their son was still standing in the room. Memory was the way Michael began to agree with his mother, the way he also began to feel let down. A father who is leaving his family for a stranger should never say so aloud. Healing didn't come through the ears. It was the words that determined what survived. One last thing Michael's father said before he went was life would be better on his son if he learned early on not to forget, many, to forget many of its details. Memory was how his father's voice kept coming back to the son. Michael wrote slowly. I don't know if we're out of time, but mm. I guess it was.